Welcome to our online service. Traditionally, the Feast of Epiphany celebrated three wonders. The visit of the Magi, the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan, and the miracle at Cana. Today we hear this third wonder, what St John calls the first of Jesus' signs. And it's a wonderfully excessive sign. Amid the anxiety, the worry and the shame of the wine running out, Jesus brings abundance. So as we gather for worship, we pray for that same grace to be present in all that feels anxious or depleted in us and in our world, for grace that brims over, poured out without measure, a promise of the fullness of God. So as our service begins, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's collect. Holy Father, creator of all things, whose blessed Son turned water into wine. Grant that he may come to us and change us, and so transform our lives, that in us your glory may be revealed. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Anne is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of John. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who'd drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Today's Gospel is one which I'm sure we all know very well. It tells a story which is rich in symbolism, and which talks not only of God's abundance, but also of healing and transformation. Ilona shared with me this week something that she had read from the American priest and theologian Michael Marsh. It really resonated with me, and so with his permission, I'm going to share the key ideas with you. He takes his springboard, the words of Mary to Jesus, they have no wine. With these words, Mary speaks a truth about our lives a truth that at some point we all experience. There comes a day when the wine gives out, the glass is empty, the party is over. On that day, life seems empty and dry. There is no vibrancy or vitality. Our world is colourless and tasteless. The bouquet of life is absent and we are less than fully alive. Each one of us could tell a story about a day when the wine gave out. It might be about the death of a loved one or the loss of a friendship or marriage. 
Some will speak about their search for love and acceptance. Some will describe their thirst for meaning and significance. Others will tell of their guilt, disappointments or regrets. Many of the stories will be about fear of what is or what might be. The storyline of unanswered prayers, doubts and questions is known by most of us. They are not all stories from the past, however. Some of us are living those stories today, perhaps especially in this pandemic, which has robbed us of so much that would normally enrich our lives. So when we read about the wedding at Cana, we're not simply guests or onlookers, but participants. Like the wedding couple, we come with hopes and dreams, seeking union, intimacy and wholeness. Despite our best efforts, good intentions and hard work, however, it seems that the wine of our life is always giving out. No matter how often we refill it, our glass remains empty. There is never enough wine. As the day wears on, we become increasingly aware that we cannot replenish the wine from our own resources. It's not a question of fault or judgment. It's a statement about the human condition. Many of us live as though we can manage everything on our own, but it's an illusion which is shattered on the day when the wine runs out and the jars of our life stand empty and dry. Then perhaps we understand that we are recipients and not creators of our life. We were never in intended or expected to live by the sufficiency of our own resources. It's a painful, even bruising experience and realisation. But the day the wine runs out is the beginning of the miracle, just as it was at Cana. Christ does more than simply refill our glasses. He transforms our being, pouring out rivers of colour, vibrancy, sensation, joy, and above all, new life. Every moment of every day, Christ pours himself into the empty jars of our life. He is the good wine, extravagant, abundant, endless. And I've experienced the miracle at Cana at times in my life and seen it in the lives of others. I have experienced moments when death is turned into life, sorrow into joy and despair into hope. I have seen that happen for other people. I have been surprised by fear that was transformed into courage and seen people do things they never thought possible. I have watched empty lives be filled back up. They have no wine, Mary said, but they will. The miracle always begins when the wine gives out and we turn to Christ.
Chris is now going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. The response to the petition, Good Lord, transform us, is that we may reveal your glory. Drawn here by God, let us bring to him our concerns for the church and the world. We pray that the church may be a vibrant sign of God's life in every generation and place, serving, listening and loving, with the human face of ordinary people lit with the brightness of God. Good Lord, transform us, that we may reveal your glory. We pray that the world's attention may be refocused on what is of lasting value, that in humility all in authority may hear the real needs, honour them and act on them. Good Lord, transform us, that we may reveal your glory. We pray that all the households and neighbourhoods of our benefice may be alerted to the signs of glory around them in the ordinary daily miracles and come to welcome Jesus as Lord. Good Lord, transform us, that we may reveal your glory. We pray that all who are searching for God may realise your closeness to them, that wrong lives may be courageously righted and damaged lives and attitudes mended. Good Lord, transform us, that we may reveal your glory. We pray that the dying may turn to you and be safely led through that last journey to the peace and joy of eternal life. We pray that we may all one day experience God's heaven. Good Lord, transform us, that we may reveal your glory. We pray that we may become increasingly aware of God's amazing love for each of us until our hearts are overflowing with thankfulness and praise. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. When we receive God's peace deep within our hearts, we begin to experience God's best wine. Therefore, let us accept the peace which God longs to pour into us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be 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 with you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. Whilst public services in the benefits remain suspended, we will continue to worship together from our own homes and there will be another online service next Sunday. Details will be on the bulletin and on the website. As before, all our churches are open on Sundays between 10am and 4pm for personal prayer and quiet reflection. And Alona and I will continue to say communion on behalf of the benefice in our studies each Sunday at 10 o'clock. We hope to see some of you for coffee in the Benefice Zoom room at 11 o'clock on Sundays and Wednesdays. Details of how to join are also on the bulletin and on our website. And so our service now ends with a blessing. May he who kept the best wine until last pour his love upon you and into you so that you may know his glory and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.